So what do you think the biggest mistake someone can make when they're using analytics? What what would be the one thing that if someone told you they did and that's what they were going off of, you'd kind of be like, well, you might want to rethink your approach to this. Well, I think the first thing is people, for some reason, have a fear of statistics. Um, there are, and on two sides. Number one, people are afraid to use statistics to confirm their opinions from watching the game. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think some people are afraid to challenge statistics uh, when they're not lined up because, you know, you're not going to get it right your first time. Like when you're first looking at a stat or making an interpretation of a stat, you're probably not going to get it right. I don't. And, and in fact, that's one of the reasons I really enjoyed putting a section at the very back of my book on how I completely blew the Ottawa Senators prediction in my first book. I loved that and chapter, by the way. I want to show people, you know what, I get things wrong all the time. We all do. Don't be afraid to put something up there. And it's going to get attacked. Mm -hmm. It's going to get attacked by, it's going to get attacked by the Steve Simmons, you know, for using stats. And it's going to get attacked just as viciously by like, you know, the Eric Tulskis because he might not have carried the one, you know? Yeah. But don't be afraid. Put it out there. Make your mistakes and, and, and don't uh, don't be afraid to have things challenged and don't be afraid to challenge things. Um, but if you're looking for more specific tactical details, I mean, my book is full of that. It's not just here's some stats and, and here's the results. It's actually showing you how to use the stats, how to be mindful of sample size, how to be mindful of some of the details and how to work around the lack of sample size or scorekeeper bias or recording bias or score effects or the dozens of things uh, that could potentially limit uh, the success of your you know, attempts to use stats. But the main, main thing is, don't be afraid. Get in there, give it a try, and don't be afraid to challenge things or to be challenged. Yeah, I always remember the first, the very first uh, article I ever published when I was writing for JetsNation.ca. Um, I made a comment about the Jets' GST line back in the day and about how the team was missing them or something like that. And this is before I really had a grasp on analytics, and I will always remember the first comment on it was from Garrett Hole, who we had on last week, just kind of being like, Sir, you, you might want to go look at this again. It was uh, it was a little harsh. It was one of those things. <laughs> it was my first like negative comment, so I was like, oh, I hate this guy. Um, but it was one of those things that um, it ended up, resulting in me really going back and putting a bit more emphasis on making sure I actually understood it. Otherwise, and that's the way you learn, right? It, you make a mistake, someone calls you out on it, you go back and double check things and try to just increase your understanding because you don't want to make that same mistake again and again and again, right? You want to learn from what you've done wrong. And mm. if you, one thing I have learned is people in the blogging community, especially the guys that I know at Arctic Ice, if you make a statement that's wrong, for the most part, we want to help teach people how to use this stuff. And I think that's kind of a general consensus from a lot of the community. A lot of the bitter sort of side of things that you might see is when the consistent attacks against the work that we guys have, like you've explained, put hours and hours of their time into doing only to see. And I think Steve Dangle had a great video explain it where they put all this time and effort into it. And the first comment they see is, oh, you nerd or something ridiculous. And I think the only time you get kind of a snarky response is when all of this work is just consistently in just disrespectfully disregarded by somebody. And that's when you're going to start getting the harsh kind of comebacks from whether it's the guy you were talking about or somebody who's reading this response and doesn't appreciate you going after their friend or someone they know who you put all this work in. But if you're putting in an honest effort to learn and asking an honest question and just trying to understand it, People are going to help explain it to you. It's the We want to help learn, teach, and we want to help expand the overall knowledge base. Otherwise, books like yours wouldn't be getting written. And you wouldn't see these blogs exploding to what they are now. A lot of these SB Nation, especially the SB Nation hockey blogs, just from my personal experience. And a lot of the personal sites that guys write, like you wouldn't see them getting the traffic or the attention they do if nobody understood what was going on. We want to help teach people. We want to help raise the awareness of what's going on. So... Don't like like you just said, Rob. Don't be afraid to use these stats and put your opinion out there and mm. put your thoughts out there if you have a platform to do so. Which again, Twitter's pretty good for. Yeah, and that was one of my favorite parts about the hockey abstract is you know you would present some stats and say you know this is what these stats show. This is a conclusion um, that you can get from the numbers, and then here's why. And that's 
that's a huge a huge thing for me is explaining you know this is why this these numbers come out this way and that totally helps put everything in perspective and um and, and you can reach different conclusions that way too but it's just important to have an opinion on it yeah and, and one little trick that that worked well for me uh when you write a blog or a post or an article and you get some comments about how you're a nerd or you get some comments from garrett about how you're a moron <laughs> or whatever comment you get here's the trick i do at that moment when i'm getting sort of you know, I guess you could say worked up or my attention is on the guy who called me a nerd or the guy who called me a moron. I shift the attention. I actually go read something that someone else wrote and I, and I retweet it, right? I promote it or I, I send him a question or I send him some data that he might find helpful or I put in a, a comment that, that explains to him what I enjoyed about his work. And then my attention shifts away from the people that call me a moron or a nerd and it's shifted towards sort of, you know, the things that really make this fun for me, you know, yeah. and, and that's a little trick. Next time you get worked up over over that, give that a try. I think you'll find that you shift to what makes analytics fun for you and away from the part that, let's be honest, can drag you down. Yeah. Just saying, Garrett, I love you, man. Don't mean anything bad by that. I'm just using this example. 